Question six then from paper two of the 2014 National Five. It looks like a Pythagoras question, except, wait, you've got all the sides. Normally in a Pythagoras question, it tells you you've got a right angle triangle, gives you two sides, and asks for the third. So this must be the other way round. Is this a right angle triangle? It'll be the converse of Pythagoras, and indeed that's what it says. It gives you these distances, and it says what? Lowtown is due west of Midtown, so you can think of that like a horizontal line. Is Hightown directly north of Lowtown? Imaginative names, they've got teams of people working out these questions for you. So the question really is, is that a right angle? If that's north, if that line goes north-south, that line's in west that should be a right angle. Is it? So it's obviously Pythagoras you could be doing, but don't set it out like a standard Pythagoras. Don't say, oh, 85 squared and 75 squared should give me that 110 squared. And then see if it's true or not, because you don't know if that statement's correct. That's not the way to set it out. The way you set it out is to say, does Pythagoras work? Is the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides the same as the square of the longer side? So you do them separately. What do they come to? What does this come to? Then you start to make your conclusions. Are they the same? Yes. Right angle. Are they not the same? Oh well, not a right angle, because Pythagoras worked or didn't work. So what's this one? Put it into your calculator, gives you 12,850. 12,850. Do I actually need your calculator for that one? Because 11 11s are 121 followed by two zeros. Now you make the comparison. But as far as the four marks are concerned, the first mark would be for doing Pythagoras things, like finding the squares of appropriate sides. The second mark would be for getting the two answers, and the third mark will be for making a comparison. Well, quite clearly, that's not equal to that, so now you can say... 85 squared plus 75 squared is not equal to 110 squared. That'd be the third mark. Now a conclusion. Well, is it due north? You've got to answer the question, no. Why not? Because it's not a right angle. No. Since, I think I'll put this in, by the converse of Pythagoras... The angle is not a right angle. I know there's a lot of writing. That's what happens. You get these questions that go to demonstrate something and explain your answer. It's not a right angle. Boom. Four marks. Now, that would be the, a classical way to use the converse of Pythagoras. Now, another way would be just to use Pythagoras and ignore that 110 and see what that turns out to be. So just using Pythagoras, you would say, well, that distance, whatever you want to call it, maybe I'll just call it HM. HM squared should be 85 squared plus 75 squared. You already got that to be 12,850, which means that HM is going to be the square root of that, the square root of 12,850, 12,850, which gives you 113.357 and so on kilometres. Now, doing it this way, again, since you've used Pythagoras as a strategy, that's the first mark, and since you've got an answer that can now form the basis of a comparison, that's the second mark. And the last two marks will be the same as before. Make a comparison, state a conclusion. Well, the comparison would be this then. 113, maybe I'll round off a bit, but 3.6 is either not equal to it or greater than it, whichever you like, make some comparison. That is not equal to 100. And then you make your conclusion, as before, da-da, by the converse of Pythagoras, the answer is no, etc. Remembering, of course, to also state it's not a right angle, because it was a right angle all hinged on, not this north, south, east, west business. Not a right angle. And there's one other way you might have done it just by ignoring Pythagoras, or they're not really ignoring Pythagoras when you do this, which would just be to home in and actually work out what that angle is. Is that angle 90 or not? Actually calculate that angle, because if you've got a triangle and you know three sides, you can use the cosine rule, that rearrangement. So you could say the cosine of that angle, HLM, would be 
Remember the way it works? It would be the two sides that include the angle. So it would be 85 squared plus 75 squared minus the opposite one, 110 squared. And of course, if they were equal, if the two shorter sides squared was the same as the longer side squared, that would come to zero. And if the cosine comes to zero, the angle must have been 90 over 2 times 85 times 75. Again, okay, that would count as the calculation. Putting that in gives you... Oh, I'll just stick with that. It gives me a 17th. But it's actually the angle I want, so I could have gone straight in with the inverse cos of the whole lot. I'll just put it in now. So that's going to be the inverse cos of a 17th. And that then gives you... Oh, 86.62 and so on degrees. The answer then gives you the second mark. But there's still a comparison. So, would it have been a right angle or not? Well, no. Would I compare that to? Well, the right angle. You would say this. 86.62 degrees is either not equal to or less than, whichever you like. Maybe this time I'll put is less than 90 degrees. There's your comparison. Now your final statement. No, blah, blah. Except you're not going to say we buy the, buy the converse of Pythagoras. You're going to say no, since the angle is not 90 degrees. It's not 90 degrees. So it can't be north. So it's not north. Or any words to that effect that mentions no and not having 90 degrees for the fourth mark. But the standard way would have been to use the converse. Is the sum of those squares the same as that square?